All right, so this is part two uh, of 2.5 parts for the introduction to the derivatives. So um, let's go ahead and do example two here. So we have our function g of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5. So we're going to find the average rate of change, but we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to find the average rate of change on the interval from 1 to 1 plus h. So what is h? Well, it's pretty much just uh, any number. It could be positive. It could be negative. Uh, it's not zero, though, because if h is zero, then, you know, we just have one and one. So nothing's really happening. Um, so let's just assume that h is a positive number, uh, just for our picture here. So uh, here's a graph of our function uh, y equals g of x. All right. Um, and here we have, uh, this is x equals 1, and here's where x is 1 plus h, we'll just toss it over here. And uh, here's the secant line. So remember, the average rate of change is equal to the slope of the secant line. So let's go ahead and figure out what this is. Um, so we're going to come over here and start with our formula. So we'll start up here. Uh, AROC for average rate of change, that equals, uh, in this case our function is g of x, so we have g of b minus g of a divided by b minus a. So what's a and what's b? Well, uh, a is where we start, which is 1, all right, so here's a, it's 1, and then b is where we end, which is 1 plus h. So b is uh, 1 plus h, okay? So then this is going to equal, uh, let's leave some space in here, because um, we're going to do something with that space later. So we'll leave a little bit of space, and we'll start over here. So if you're following along on your own piece of paper, uh, go ahead and leave some space here. Um, so this is going to be g of 1 plus h minus g of 1, all divided by 1 plus h minus 1. Okay? So uh, before we go further, uh, let's simplify it. 1 plus h minus 1, that could be easily simplified. Uh, the 1 and the minus 1 cancel, so we just have an h on the bottom. So uh, this g of 1 plus h minus g of 1, all divided by h, that's a specific example of what's called difference quotient. All right? So a difference quotient, uh, just real quick, in general, a difference quotient is something of the form uh, f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. Uh, that's, that's what's called a difference quotient. So let's go ahead and uh, write that down. Uh, difference quotient. Alright, so this is uh, an important thing here. You might have learned that in your pre-calculus days. But anyway, um, this here is a difference quotient. So this is a specific example of that. So let's go ahead and continue now. Um, here, g of 1 plus h and g of 1, uh, we have to figure out what are those guys now. So this is where things get a little bit messy because we have this x cubed here. So g of x is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5. So g of 1 plus h, let's come down here. Uh, g of 1 plus h is going to be 1 plus h cubed minus 3 times 1 plus h squared plus 5. So when we expand this, that's uh, 1 plus h times 1 plus h times 1 plus h. That's going to be 1 plus 3h plus 3h squared plus h cubed. All right. Uh, and then here we have minus 3 times, this is 1 plus h times 1 plus h, so we just foil it, and we're going to get 1 plus 2h plus h squared. And then we still have this uh, plus 5 here. Okay. So what does this equal? Well, first, uh, let's go ahead and expand this, uh, or distribute this negative 3. Okay, so we'll just do it here because we're kind of running out of room over here. So um, if we distribute the negative 3, we're going to have minus 3 minus 6h minus 3h squared. All right, so let's go ahead and put that in there. So we have uh, minus 3 minus 6h minus 3h squared. Okay. So now let's go ahead and combine all the like terms. So uh, here's an h cubed, all right? That's the highest power of h. Uh, there's no other h cubed there. So we just have h cubed. Uh, then what? 3h squared, and then minus 3h squared. So these guys cancel, so that's good. Um, what's next? Plus 3h, and then minus 6h. So that's uh, minus 3h overall. Okay, uh, then what? 1 minus 3 is negative 2, 
and then negative 2 plus 5 gives us a uh, plus 3. So it's kind of messy, maybe a little complicated with the algebra because we have the cubed here, but um, g of 1 plus h simplifies kind of nicely to uh, h cubed minus 3h plus 3. So now we've got to figure out what about g of 1. So g of 1 is going to be easier. All right, remember, g of x is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5. So that means uh, g of 1 g of 1 is uh, 1 cubed minus 3 times 1 squared plus 5, which is just 1 minus 3 plus 5, which is uh, 3. Okay. So g of 1 plus h is h cubed minus 3h plus 3. g of 1 is 3. So let's go ahead and put these up here. So this equals, uh, remember we want to leave some space here. So this is going to be uh, h cubed minus 3h plus 3. All right, this is our g of 1 plus h. And now we're going to subtract g of 1. So minus g of 1 gives us minus 3, because g of 1 is just 3. And then we're dividing all that by h. All right, so what happens now? So now, uh, Simplify some more. Plus 3, minus 3, those cancel. That's good. And uh, now we have h cubed, minus 3h, all divided by h. So there's a common factor of h everywhere. So let's go ahead and pull it out on top. So we have h times h squared minus 3 in parentheses, and then all divided by h. So now uh, h is cancel. That's great. And now what we have is uh, h squared minus 3. OK, so what's the significance of that? So um, let's go back to this graph here. So h squared minus 3, that's the average rate of change of g of x on this interval from 1 to 1 plus h. And it's also equal to the slope of the secant line here. So that's, that's all great. But what's the, um, what's the significance of this h here? Um, let's go ahead and see what happens if we do this. So now we're going to fill in these blank spaces here. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we start to do this. So we're going to take a limit as h goes to 0. All right. So um, if we try to do that right here, what's going to happen? Well, we just end up with uh, g of 1 minus g of 1, which is 0, all divided by 0. So we can't do direct substitution right away. right? So um, let's carry this limit down. All right. Oh, also, um, because we're putting a limit in here, this, uh, technically speaking, is not an average rate of change anymore. So we should erase that and that too. So uh, once we push this through the limit process, something else is going to happen. And we're going to see what happens shortly after that. So limits as h goes to 0. Um, and then limits as h goes to 0 of this here. So now once we simplify as much as we can, we're down to here. Now we can do direct substitution, right? So this is um, just going to be 0 squared minus 3, which is negative 3, right? So what is this value? What's so significant about that? Well, what does it mean to take a limit as h goes to 0 if we look at this graph here? So here's 1, here's 1 plus h. As h goes to 0, where is 1 plus h going? Well, h is going to 0. Add 1 to both sides of that. 1 plus h goes to 1. So in other words, as h goes to 0, um, this point here, where x equals 1 plus h, this point is going to move into this point here. All right, so h gets closer and closer to 0. That means 1 plus h gets closer and closer to 1. So this point gets closer and closer to this point over here. So what's going to happen is um, this point moves into this one. This one just stays here. So we're going to get different secant lines. Okay, We're just going to get more and more secant lines as this point moves in to this point over here. So eventually what happens is um, you know, we take a limit as h goes to 0. And what happens is... Uh, this point moves into this one, and we don't have a secant line anymore. But what happens is once these two points merge into one point, uh, we just end up with what's called a tangent line. So here uh, would be the tangent line, roughly. OK? So here's the tangent line at the point x equals 1. So once this point here, where x is 1 plus h, once it's moved into this point here, uh, now we don't have a secant line. We just have a tangent line. So a tangent line. Um, roughly speaking, is a limit of secant lines. So here we took a limit as h goes to 0. And basically, we're taking a limit of a bunch of secant lines. Uh, and then what we end up with is just a tangent line. So secant lines, you know, the slope of a secant line is the average rate of change over an interval, right? 
but with the tangent line there's no interval anymore because the two points merged into one point over here. So uh, a tangent line gives you an instantaneous rate of change at a single point. Okay, so uh, that's worth repeating. Um, the slope of a secant line gives you an average rate of change over, over an interval, but the slope of a tangent line gives you the instantaneous rate of change at a point. So this function g of x, uh, when x equals 1, the instantaneous rate of change is the slope of this tangent line. And what's the slope of this tangent line? Well, it's this. It's negative 3. All right? Because um, if we take a limit as h goes to 0 of this, then what happens geometrically is we have uh, this point moving into this point here. All right? So we're just getting different secant lines as we move along. And then eventually we end up with the tangent line. And the slope of the tangent line uh, is equal to this limit uh, here. So if you're having trouble uh, picturing what happens as this point moves into this point, uh, the next video, which is part 2.5, actually uh, shows an animation of what's happening here. So if you're having trouble visualizing that, um, hopefully that video will help you. But anyway, this is what's happening here. And uh, what's all this have to do with derivatives? Well, that actually is the definition of a derivative. Okay, the slope of this tangent line here um, is the same thing as the instantaneous rate of change of this function at that point, and that's what a derivative is defined to be. So let's go ahead and write that down to summarize that. So we'll erase all this here. So we'll just write down the definition in general um, now that we've pretty much uh, done all the work for it. So uh, the derivative of f of x at, uh, let's just say, at x equals c is defined to be this. f apostrophe c, this is read f primed of c, this is just an apostrophe, it's read uh, f primed, uh, kind of like prime rib, f primed of c equals uh, the limit as h goes to zero of f of c plus h minus f of c all divided by h. So here's our difference quotient, right? So instead of x, we have a c, but that doesn't really matter. Um, so here's our difference quotient. And yeah, um, our function here is g, but you know it's just a function. We can call it whatever we want. And this is just a general definition here. So um, the derivative of f of x at x equals c is defined to be uh, f primed of c equals the limit as h goes to 0 of this difference quotient here. So uh, this right here is probably one of the most important things you'll learn in a math class. Um, so this is definitely something you'll want to remember. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what's happening geometrically as we take this limit. Uh, that's going to be in the next video, so let's go ahead and check that out.